In this class, I will give you seven hacks how to be more productive using an iPhone. Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm a travel blogger and a filmmaker. And in the last couple of years, I was building my own travel blog, my book, and I also run a YouTube channel. And I'm using my iPhone many times to do research, to write stuff, to be more productive. But we have this problem nowadays that all of those smartphones can also distract us. They can actually take us a lot of time and they make us less productive. So in this class, I will show you how you can use your iPhone to be more productive, what kind of settings, what kind of apps, all the things to make you more productive. And in the end, I will also give you a bonus because then I will give you some of the best techniques that you can use to be more productive. I'm looking forward to see you in this class. Let's jump straight to the first session. So what we do in the first session is we do a couple of different settings so that we make our iPhone less distractive. Because what we know now, there's this book, Indestructible. We live in a world where all the different pings and notifications and that and that and that, it will take you off from your work because it is proven that when you hear the ding it is already now in your brain even if you try to work you will always Oh, oh, what was that thing? Oh yeah, okay. And that will always take you out of the work and it will take you longer to go back into the work. So you lose time just by checking your phone. So the first setting is, you know when you take your phone and you look at the phone and it immediately it turns on and now you can see notifications on your phone. You can change this so that every time you only see your phone when you actually touch it or you want to do something and press the button. So to change that, you have to go into your settings, go settings and then we go to display and brightness and you will find here raise to wake take this one off. So now every time when you take your phone subconsciously and you look at this, it will not turn automatically on. You can now touch it to turn it on, but you can touch a button and then it will work. The idea behind indestructible is that you put as many barriers as possible in between your apps that will distract you and your productivity or your focus or your work. So what you can do now is you can actually create folders, put apps into folders, and you can also hide full pages. If I have, for example, two too many apps on my iPhone and I don't want to have that many apps, you can always go in and actually disable the pages you don't want to have and done. If you need an app, you can always go to the app library and just search the app there, whatever, Facebook, and then you can start that. One idea is that you change your home screen to only the apps that are productivity and are important to you and all the other apps, you let them be deeper in the system. So every time when you have a distraction that it takes you more time to actually open that app, so this brings us to notification. It is very important that you control what kind of pings and dings and dongs will distract you. In my case, for example, I disabled every app with notifications because I don't want if I'm working that a ping will distract me because I know how my brain works. When I get a ping, I get a message. If I get something, I will go and check my phone and I will not be focused anymore until I see what this ping was. So what we do now is we go into the settings and here under settings, you find notifications and you can go into every app and just tell the app if notifications are allowed or not. I can disable that one. Boom. I can go in and I can disable it for the most apps that I don't want to have the notification. So if you don't want to go through all the settings for the notification, you can always go and slide down and focus do not disturb modus. All the notifications will not come through and your iPhone will not distract you. So we have the do not disturb mode. This is one of the oldest focus modes, but now you can actually change different ones. So if you go up and swipe down, you see her on focus. If you now go and click it, you can also select different focus modes and you can even create new focus mode. For example, in my case, I created a focus mode just for when I'm writing on my blog. And if you create those focus modes, you can have to think about it like this. You can create something that is tailored to just one specific task and you can now change the settings, what kind of apps, what kind of home screen, what kind of people are allowed to text you or not text you. Let's do this together. So if you go here to new focus, you can create now a new focus for whatever you want to do. Let's say gaming, for example, you want to game now and you don't want to be disturbed. So you can now say, okay, next, I don't want that any people are contacting me. If there's any people, like let's say your gaming friends, you could add them here from your context. In my case, now this is allow none. And then what kind of apps are allowed to give you notifications? You could now set up the apps like for example, oh yeah, every time when my stock app is interrupting me, that's allowed, but everything else not. In this case, no, I want a game. I don't want to be disturbed from anyone. So I say no. So now with the gaming, there's even a specific setting in. So every time when you connect a controller to your iPhone and you want to play or your iPad, for example, then it will automatically detect this that you want to play and would shift with the focus mode gaming. 
I like to set those things up by myself. So I will say skip and now I can say done. And what I also can do, I can, for example, limit all the things that are available on my home screen. So for example, here I can go on home screen and can say custom pages. And let's say only the last page is the page that I wanna be seeing when this is now for gaming. And this is the same for all the other modes. So let's say, for example, you have a writing mode where you don't wanna be disturbed with Instagram and all the other social medias. So you can place them on a page that you now hide and you don't have access to that. So so you have to go out of the focus mode and you have to then actively choose to go into the social media app. And this is one of those barriers that I was talking about. So in this case, I would just say, this okay fine hide notification badges i don't want to see them as well so this focus now is done so if i go in here and i can now change this to gaming and i will only see also the home screen you see only the home screen that i selected so hack number three is actually the first app that i want to recommend and this is an app that changed the way i use my ipad my iphone and even i use this on my windows and this is a note-taking app that is not just a note-taking app it's actually everything it can be a kanban it can be your to-do list it can be just a note taking a journaling there is so much more to it and i don't even use all of the functions yet but this app is called notion so if you open notion on your iphone it is always in the cloud connected to your ipad to your windows there is an app you can go into the browser you give example those are the notes that i took for this class i was brainstorming ideas and now i'm at point number three telling you about notion but if i have anything i want to write down i can create different folders i can make to-do lists i can do journaling here i make a new page dump ideas here i want to create a to-do list i can do this here bring out the garbage install a new plugin and now i can go in and also check those things off but there's so much more to notion there are different skillshare classes on notion you should definitely check this out this app it takes a little bit of a learning curve to come into the app but then when you actually use it and you can do your planning you can do your writing down your notes this is basically the one app for everything and you don't have to change the app anymore so hack number for a text replacement. So let's say, for example, I go into any message and then I type in a short form like MFG, spacebar, and now it writes down the word that I was supposed to write. I can put phrases faster into place. Let's say, for example, you answer some typical comments and all the time you use the same phrases. You can use this or your phone number or whatever. And how you can set this up is you go to your settings and then under general, you will find keyboards. And on the keyboards, you find text replacements. And here you can add different types of text replacements. Let's say for example, hi, this is a replacement. And every time when I hit, I make three T's, save. And now I can go into the note app and hit. 3T spacebar and hi, this is a replacement. And this is how it works. It is actually one of the functions that is already very long on the iPhone, but many people don't use it because you have to set it up a bit. But as you can see now, to set this up, so you can use this when you reply to comments, when you write stuff, when in your emails, for example, and you will just improve your productivity. Hack number five is use Siri shortcuts. So there are two types of people. One type of people who already use Siri shortcuts and you can do all kinds of different things. And the other type of people maybe have heard about Siri Siri shortcuts or maybe don't even know that there exists. Since a couple of versions, we have Siri shortcuts now included in the iOS. So you have it, you don't have to download it, it's already there. And it looks like this, shortcuts. And when you go in, you have all kinds of different shortcuts that you created in the past. Or if you're brand new to it, then you will have just a couple of suggestions that you can do. But shortcuts can help you with whatever you do on a daily basis. So for example, if you have a couple of clicks that you do, you go in there, you do this, you click this, you click this, and then you start your favorite podcast, for example, you can automate this and create an icon on your home screen and then you can start this. But you are not limited by just a couple of apps. So basically your imagination is the limitation. So it depends on what you want to use it for. Today I just show you a couple of shortcuts that you can use to become more productive or that are helpful. But in general, I would say that you start using shortcuts and trying to understand them better. And for that, I created another course here on Skillshare because that topic in itself is a whole topic. So if you never used shortcuts before, I would recommend that you start watching the other one, the shortcuts for beginners. I will run you through your first automations, your first shortcuts. I will also show you many, many more shortcuts and where you can find them, where you can download them because you don't even have to create all of them. But basically shortcuts, I would say if you want to become more productive, this is one way you should definitely look into it. But I will give you now a couple of examples. And the funny thing with the shortcuts app is that you can start those shortcuts in total different ways. It's called Siri shortcuts because I can start my shortcuts by just saying Siri the code that I want. For example, I have a shortcut that's Instagram tag. So I can now go into Instagram, boom. Let's say I wanna place my tags here on this photo. Now I can just say, hey Siri, 
Uh-huh. Shortcut Instagram tag. That's done. So now it's already done. So what it means, I don't have to leave the app. I can just go in and say paste. And then all of my tags are already here and I can just post it. So another way that you can start those shortcuts, you can create icons on your home screen. For example, my light setup that I have here, I created a shortcut here on lights and I can turn them on or off depending if I want to have it. Boom, now off, I can do it again, on. Or you can create widgets. So you have a widget section where you can also start your different types of shortcuts. For example, here, font switcher. This is a very cool shortcut where I can now type in any text that I want. And this type of text, I can now change the font of this text. For example, this is very helpful when you go into Instagram and you want to change your bio and change it to a font. I want to have this numbers. Now it will ask me if you want to copy this one. Yes, of course, I want to copy this one. And I can now go back to Instagram in my profile, edit profile and copy this one here. Boom. You see, now it's done. So this is also a cool shortcut that you can use. And another way you can use shortcuts is also by sharing stuff. I wanna give you an example. So let's say I wanna watch a YouTube video, but in the background. So for example, I can go here in, start the video. In this video, I will show- I can go here on share, go to more, and now I get this window here and I can now select the shortcuts that have the function for sharing. So for example, YouTube in the background. Last year I published my first book, but this year it's all about videos because I have the skills of videos over the last five. So now I can even go into different apps, still continue watching YouTube. That's maybe not as interesting for the iPad because the iPad has split screen, but for the iPhone, this is very, very helpful. And you don't have to pay for YouTube premium. Another way you can start those shortcuts is obviously from the shortcuts app itself. For example, here I have a shortcut, it's called take a break. And that's a pretty cool one because when I say take a break, it will ask me how many minutes. So let's for example say 25 minutes because that's like this typical Pomodoro technique. So I wanna be focused for 25 minutes, work on something. And what it will do is when I hit this now, 25 minutes, it will also change my focus mode to not disturb. And when the time is over, the 25 minutes, it will change it back to normal. So here, I just wanted to give you an overview about shortcuts. And there are also many ways you don't have to create the shortcuts yourself. And that's why I created the other class about shortcuts for beginners where you also will find out where you can find shortcuts great shortcuts I have a list with amazing shortcuts that you can just straight download and we will do your first shortcuts together because I think if you understand shortcuts you will become more productive using your iPhone or your iPad so productivity hack number six is use a timer app to track all the times for the different projects so then you know how much time you actually have so if you plan working on stuff you will be more accurate in the future because you tracked your time especially Especially when you start working with clients, you want to track all of your time. And there are a couple of great apps that you can use. I used Clockify in the past, it was amazing. The app that I will show you today is called Timery. So Timery is this app here right now. When you go in, you can set up different projects. You can create as many as you want. For example, for me now, I worked on Skillshare classes, I worked on my YouTube videos, I worked on my website, xlima.net, and also still work on my Canada stuff. When you are in the app, every time you click one of those, you will start a timer and it starts, you can work. And if you're done, you can hit stop. You can change the times here under time and you will also get report. I mean, I don't have to explain you the timer system, but I want to encourage you that you use something like this. The cool thing about this is that you can create widgets. For example, here I can start one of my timers straight from my home screen. Let's say I want to work on my blog. Boom, it starts the timer. But even better than this is that you can even stack widgets. You already know stacking widgets, right? You can place under one widget different widgets. And those are all the timery widgets. So I can see, oh, today I worked that much, blah, 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 blah. Or I can go in and I see this week. Without even going into the app, I can see fast my tracking times and all the things. And I would encourage you to use a timer. So hack number seven is actually a different type of browser. So there's a browser app, it's called Command Browser. And this looks like this one here, Command. And the cool thing about this browser is if you browse the internet and you go to any blog article and you're doing your research, especially when you're working on your iPad and you have split screen and on the other side you have, for example, Notion where you take your notes and everything, you can go in here and highlight something. And what you highlight will be highlighted forever in this app. Doesn't matter where you highlight something, you can go to highlights and, and you can see all the highlights that you made. So for example, if you do some research for your work, for an article, for whatever, for a YouTube video, you can go back and find the highlights you did. So that makes it easier to save stuff, to highlight stuff. I definitely recommend this browser. So now we are in the bonus part of this class where I just give you a couple of more tricks and tips and also a couple of good apps. Let's start with one more cool app that I actually now started using on my iPad even more. That's called GoodNotes. This app costs money, but 
the cool thing is about this is whatever you write on your iPad with hand, you can write with your hand stuff in, you can search in this app and let's say for example, boom, it finds the stuff that you write with your hands. I think personally, this is one of the best note apps out there. And I think all the people who use this agree with me. You should definitely get that one. And I have to say thank you for Stefan. It's a nice guy that I met just a couple of weeks ago on an event. And he told me about this good notes app. And I really, really like this app. It's an amazing app. So one simple trick just to speed up your workflow. Let's say if you want to close apps, right? You notice we go in here and we close those apps. What you actually can do is you can use three fingers and just swipe multiple up and close your stuff just faster and faster and faster, okay? Next simple trick and hack is if you wanna delete an app from your phone, you don't have to actually search for the app. You can also just go into the app store, go through your apps here, and if you see an app that you don't like, you just go and swipe and delete this app. If you wanna send a screenshot very fast, is actually what you can do is you make a screenshot here, and then if you click this, you can share that one straight with your messages. So the next trick is if you have audio running and you wanna create a video, and the audio is running, what you can do is you can just go into your camera. When you go to video, your audio will stop. But if you are in the photo mode and longer press this button here, it will also record the audio. The last two tips that I actually wanna give you here in this bonus part are two techniques. One is called the Pomodoro technique, it's actually Italian and stands for tomato, I think, but I'm not sure it's this tomato clock, but I have no idea. But definitely what it is, is that you have only 25 minutes for a given task. Because science found out that you can actually just focus for like 25 minutes after your focus and efficiency goes down. So the idea behind the Pomodoro technique is that you set yourself an alarm for 25 minutes, you focus on that task and then you go on to the next task. You give yourself a break, five, 10 minutes, straight to the next task, 25 minutes. And if you can't finish your work, you are still allowed to like do another session with 25 minutes. But if you realize that whatever you do takes you too much time, then the problem that you're doing right now here is you have to break down your task into smaller bite size so that you can finish it. I wanna give you an example. If I make a video on YouTube, sometimes I take like hours to search for the right song. But the problem is even if I spend more time searching for a right song, I will never really find the best song. Maybe I do after five, six hours, but the thing is I wasted like five, six hours to find a good song. If you wanna be more productive and faster, I can say to myself like, okay, 25 minutes, I find a song and the best song that I find, I just use. The second technique is actually also very simple. It's called blocking time in your calendar. So for whatever you wanna do, you use a time frame in your calendar and you block it. And the important part here is that you don't just do it for your work. You can block time for whatever is important for you. Let's say. In the morning, one hour, this is my morning routine where I read, where I do exercise, whatever, you block the time. Or, oh, I wanna network with people, I block the time. Or I know in the morning, let's say from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, this is where I'm the most productive. So I don't wanna take any interviews, Zoom calls into this time because I can write and do stuff. So you block yourself three hours of time and you say, this is my productivity time where I just work on my stuff that I want. So blocking time is one of the most common used techniques from many efficient people and you can just do it in your iPhone calendar. You don't have to use another calendar. Obviously, you can use Google Calendar and another calendar. That's preference. But if you start using this technique just for simple things, blocking time, this will also make you more efficient because then you know this is the time frame that I give myself for that. If I have an interview or a meeting, I will give it there and block time there. And the last bonus is there are many more productivity classes here on Skillshare. And the one that I recommend to you because this guy is just amazing is from Ali Abdul. He has a productivity class here on Skillshare. This guy is just crushing it on YouTube with productivity. He is amazing. You, if you start listening to him, it's like butter. You just listen and listen and listen and listen. So I learned a lot from him. So definitely check out his class. Every good video also has a call to action in the end. And the call to action I want to give you is check out my other classes here on Skillshare. I have a couple of more cool classes about iPhone and iPad hacks and productivity. And there will be more classes in the future. But if you also want to see more tech stuff, definitely check out my YouTube channel, which is Daniel Kovac or my Instagram. Ask me questions there if you have any questions if you didn't understand anything or if you have ideas how to make this class even better just let me know write me a comment there and i hope you have an amazing time become more productive and get your things done and achieve your dreams and everything i wish you a good time i'm daniel bye